What's going on everybody, Froggy Knight here, and today I want to take a few moments to share with y'all a handful of my Red Dead Redemption 2 tips and tricks. Just a few things that make life a little bit easier when playing the game. Uh, I know we got a lot of new players coming in with the PC release the other day, so I figured now would be about as good a time as any to share what I've learned over my time playing the game. Uh, if you see anything that you like, please feel free to give the video a thumbs up. If you see anything that I missed, please feel free to leave that down in the comment section below. And uh, yeah, let's just uh, see what we got going on here. Alrighty everybody, the first thing I have is going to be defensive mode. Now there's offensive mode and defensive mode styles for playing the game. You want to hit your left button on your D-pad to pull up your menu here. You're going to scroll down to the bottom where it says online options. Then you're going to scroll down to where it says playing style. There's going to be a toggle between defensive and offensive. Now offensive is the default playing style. All damage is normal and all missions are accessible. Defensive mode, on the other hand, adjusts the damage so that you take less damage from other players with whom you are not deemed hostile or with whom you have not yet initiated combat. Some missions will not be accessible in defensive mode, however. If you queue for these missions, it will remove you from defensive mode, or you can just remove defensive mode on your own before trying to queue up with these certain styles of missions. Being in defensive mode will actually give you more time to fight back against another player attack or to turn and run away. Defensive mode is really designed for players who kind of want to be left alone and explore the game world at their own pace without the interference from other players or griefers. The next tip I have for everybody is daily challenges. Now there's two types of daily challenges. There's the regular challenges and the specialist challenges. There are seven regular challenges every day as well as a bonus for completing those seven and there are a total of nine unlockable specialist role challenges every day. You have to level up a little ways in each of these specialist roles to unlock all the challenges but once you have you'll have a total of nine to do each and every day. For each of the challenges that you complete you will receive a default value of 0 .20 gold bars and the bonus for completing all seven of the dailies is going to be 0 .60 gold bars giving you two gold bars for the day for the regular challenges and 1.8 for the specialist roles. Now there are multipliers for the challenges as well. If you finish one challenge a day for the first week, your multiplier for the second week will be times 1.5. Do the same for the second week, your third week becomes times 2. Do the same for the third week and your fourth week becomes times 2.5. If you finish the fourth week, the 28th day, you will receive an additional treasure map. If you manage to finish all of your dailies, both regular and specialist roles for the entire month, you can bring in a total of 228.2 gold bars. Any day after the 28th day, and your multiply remains at 2.5, meaning if you finish the regular challenges, you get 5 gold bars. If you finish the specialist, you get 4.5. So any day after the 28th day, with a 2.5 multiplier, meaning means you are getting 9 gold bars a day. Now, while we're on the topic of treasure and money, one of the best ways to make money is to work on your specialty rules. Now, those are Bounty Hunter, Trader, and Collector. Uh, you have to buy into each one of those respectively, and then they will be unlocked, and you can start leveling those up. And through leveling those up, you earn more ways to participate in each of those specialties, as well as earning items to make your gameplay easier. Uh, this is the collector one. This is through Madame Nazar. After I've already bought in, oh, sorry, hold on. Someone's, yeah, what's, what, what is that? Someone, ah, stop shooting me! Dude, will you just knock it off? Go, go away. See, that is a prime example right there of why uh, defensive mode is a good thing. Uh, that guy probably would have killed me in one or two shots had I not have defensive mode on. When I'm just over here trying to mind my own business. Anyway, uh, so you go to Madame Nazar and you uh, buy into the collectors, and then you're able to find hidden items on the map. Uh, a lot of the early items you can find with just using your eagle eye vision. Uh, they're all over the map. Those are tarot cards, arrowheads, things of that nature. And then uh, as you level up, uh, Madame Nazar will sell you uh, a shovel, a metal detector, and then certain perks to allow other certain ones of those items to show up under your eagle vision a lot further. She also sells treasure maps, which will show you directly on the world map where those things are. You can carry one of each of the treasure maps at a time for each of the individual uh, collectibles. And you can sell the collectibles one at a time, or you can wait until you get the full collection, and it's worth uh, quite a bit more if you sell the full collection. 
Now, the thing is, you don't need the maps to find the items. The maps will just specifically tell you where the items are, and they'll show you that. And they will also show you where Madame Nazar is, because she does move to one of 12 spots uh, every day. So every 24 hours, she'll be in one of her new spots. Here we can see I've uh, pulled off to the side of the road here and using my metal detector to find one of these items. Uh, you will feel these vibrating in the controller. For PC players, I don't quite know how they have yours set up, so you can tell when you're going past items. Uh, most of the regular items are accessible just regular vibrating. Uh, anything metal coins, anything metal buried in a metal box, that will show up with your metal detector, so you need to ride around with your metal detector out as well as put it away from time to time to make sure you're scanning for both items. Uh, once you've purchased the shovel from Madame Nazar, you can dig up items out of the ground like that. And right there I just got a, looks like a ring. So that goes into my collection and my collectibles in the collectibles bag. And as you can see right here, I've got uh, just a couple of them. And if I were to get the whole collection, I would get quite a bit more money from selling them off. Otherwise they're worth between uh, about 10 and $15 a piece. Uh, there's the tarot cards. Uh, we've got all kinds of different little collectibles here throughout the uh, throughout the world. Right, so just uh, take another look real quick through the uh, collector's menu. Then I don't have somebody shooting at me. Uh, so this is the rolls menu. This is the collector. Uh, as you can see, you level up here, and as you get experience, these are your rewards. These are your ancient coins. These are what's used to buy some of the bigger items on the bottom here. And then as you level up, you unlock these. So uh, this allows me to partake in more events. This uh, is extra abilities from my eagle eye. This allows me to narrow my search field down a little bit more. Uh, so there's different little things like that to level up your, your rolls. Right here is just a real quick example of uh, finding one of those uh, hidden items from the collector that I was telling you about. I felt the vibration in the controller in the uh, clothing shop. So I figured it was around the back side here. So you just go out around, uh, wait until the vibration gets a little bit stronger. You'll feel it get more, and then you use your equal vision, and it's uh, it's right here on top of the crate. And you can see the the yellow plumes of smoke or dust or whatever is coming off the top here. So uh, that's how you can find some of those uh, collectible items just sitting on the world map, and they refresh uh, once every 24 hours. Now, they won't be in the exact same spots, but there are certain spots that you can check and go back to, and uh, items will respawn there. The next tip I have for you is a little bit of easy money and a little bit of easy gold. It's not much, but for newer players, sometimes you need a little bit to get started because some of that stuff I was mentioning before takes a little while to get going. Uh, you can sell herbs to either of the doctors in the game. There is one in San Denis and there is one in Valentine. Um, now, there are also awards in the game. If you do certain things a certain amount of times, uh, you can get the awards unlocked, and once you finish the award, certain rewards you can reset and after you reset them you'll get an award of gold and then the uh, award will reset and then you can do it again up to 10 times total so one of them is to sell 100 uh, herbs to the doctor so I am just about to finish here on 100 herbs you sell them to the doctor real quick and as you can see I finished the challenge or the yeah the challenge you have to get the in-game award uh, and then you go through here and you reset it and then you'll see right here that I'll get some money, some experience, and just a little bit of gold. Uh, there's a couple of other awards in the game that are very easy to do and to replicate very fast, and I will show you sure, what those what are got? in just a second. Now that's a deal. Now, so there are awards for doing just about every activity you can think of in the game here. And those are all under the pause menu, under your progress and awards section there. As you can see, there are very many different topics. Uh, the ones I like to do are hunting. This one right here is kill multiple animals, or two, with a stick of dynamite. Now there's two places on the map that you can buy dynamite. Dynamite's not very expensive. So what you would essentially do is go buy the dynamite, stand off the side of the pier, and continuously throw the dynamite into the water and keep getting your fish. But as you can see, there's tons of other rewards for all various things, hunting, gathering, turning and selling things, shooting animals for moving trains, trade, uh, doing your daily challenges, just about any activity you can think of in the game, there's probably an award for it. Just be sure to check back on these regularly to make sure you haven't finished any that you need to reset and that you're not uh, you know, missing any gold rewards for doing so. Uh, those little spots on the map real quick to do the dynamite one, those are down, uh, let's see, we're gonna go all the way down here. Just uh, south of Blackwater here, you're going to go over by Thieves Landing. That's the gentleman down there. The fence sells dynamite over there. And you can go all the way north to Van Horn. 
and the fence over here sells dynamite. So you can actually just buy dynamite, stand off the pier, and throw it into little piles of fish there and get those awards unlocked pretty quick. And that's a little bit of easy gold. My next tip or trick revolves around small game hunting. Uh, if you use a varmint rifle or small game arrows, which are unlocked at level 24, uh, you can actually shoot fish out of the water with small game arrows, and they don't take any real damage. They still remain perfect three-star fish. Uh, you also get the added benefit of being able to retrieve your arrows out of the water if you keep a good eye on them, meaning you didn't pay anything to spend that ammo to get that fish, so it's all profit. Certain fish, like the sockeye salmon, are worth $2.50 a piece, and you can stack up to 10 of them in your satchel before needing to sell. You can also fish using your varmint rifle, but I wouldn't recommend that method because it does cost you ammo to shoot the fish out of the water, and the fish do end up taking damage. It will knock them down to a two-star or a, even a one-star fish. Another thing I'll show you real quick is that you can use your eagle eye to see the fish underwater, but only if you have your fishing pole equipped. Uh, if you have a regular weapon in your hands, you won't be able to see the fish, but if you just swap over to your fishing pole real quick, activate your eagle eye, uh, you'll be able to see all the fish swimming there underneath the surface, and you can uh, shoot them with your rifle, your bow, throw a couple of sticks of dynamite in there, you know, whatever you're in the mood for. Ladies of the line. Okay, here we are. I'm going to turn in all those little small critters I've been collecting along the way since I've been playing. As you can see here, uh, some of these things are worth uh, a little bit. Some of these feathers here are worth a dollar, dollar fifty. Some of them can be even up to two dollars. And you can stack up to ten of them in your inventory at a time uh, before needing to sell. So I'm just going to sell all of these things real quick. And uh, we'll end up with about mm, thirty-four dollars or so for a handful of birds, some few fish, a uh, mouse, toad, a couple things like that. So I prefer this method of hunting just because you can do it while you're out and about riding. Uh, you don't need to stop what you're doing to do it. Just anytime you see something small, just hit it real quick, pick it up, uh, put it in your pockets, and then uh, keep going about what you're doing. Two main reasons I stick to smaller creatures like this are one, bad internet. If you disconnect a lot from the servers, you'll lose any animals or pelts you have on the back of your horse. And number two is griefers, which isn't so much of an issue anymore, but anybody attacking your horse can knock your pelts on the ground, steal them from themselves, or just make it so you can't get back to them. So I prefer animals that I put in my pockets that nobody can take away from me. Okay, we're running down to our last couple of tips and tricks here. Uh, this one's going to be about horse stamina. Uh, you can click the calming button on your horse to get the stamina back while you're riding. If you time your gallops with the hoofbeats of the horse, you will actually use less stamina and you'll be able to maintain it longer. Uh, you can do this in the story mode as well. You'll be able to hear the main character calling out to the horse. You just can't hear it online because your character is mute, but if you watch right about here, there it goes. My stamina just jumped right back up because I clicked the button. You can do it about once every 30 seconds or so. So if you properly balance and maintain your stamina, you'll be able to essentially ride almost infinitely at full speed. It takes about another 30 seconds or so before you can click the button again. And uh, you just wait for it and click the calm button right about there and you'll see your stamina pop right back up. You get about an eighth of a meter or so, give or take. But uh, it really does make all the difference when it comes back up. So here we go, I've got some right here for you. Click, 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 there we go. There are a lot of veteran players that don't know this as well, so this is a great tip for winning races. One of my last tips here is going to be free beer. That's right, I said free beer. If you go by any player camp, either yours or any other players, there is a crate of beer next to the face washing kit by their wagon. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything, it doesn't cost the other players anything. You don't have to be friends with them, in a posse with them, or aligned with them in any way. You can just cruise by, grab one, it's great for refilling your dead eye core and you can even wash your face in the barrel next to it. That's one of the only places in online mode that you can uh, clean your character up without having to run through a river or change your clothes at an outfitter or one of the custom outfits on your horse. Uh, while you're at your camp, you may want to consider sitting at your campfire to refill your cores without having to eat any food or snacks. Uh, it's a good free way to refill your cores. Definitely want to keep those maintained. Alrighty guys, my last tip or trick for you is going to be a free uh, cold weather outfit relatively early in the game. Now, asterisk on the word free because you have to have a permanent posse to do this, which I believe is about $200. Uh, but once you have a permanent posse, what you do is you set the permanent posse's default outfit style to rugged. And what that will enable you to do is select one of the outfits that has a cold weather coat on it. 
So anytime you form that posse, you and any posse members are automatically equipped with the heavy weather coat. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to get to the northern sections of the map a little bit earlier in the game than most folks before you end up buying cold weather gear uh, outright on your own. Uh, it'll allow you to do fishing, hunting, things up there. Uh, there's a bandit uh, hideout up there. Uh, there's also plenty of places to find collectible items in the northern sections of the map that most players just aren't going to go for, either A, because they don't have the cold weather gear, or B, they just don't care to plot around through the snow and things like that. And that's going to be it for me, everybody. Thank you very much for watching my tips and tricks video. I hope you guys learned something. Uh, if you see anything that I missed, please drop it down in the comments section below. Uh, once again, I have been Froggy Knight, and thank you very much for watching. I will see you all in the next one. Thank you.